how do you do it throughout the entire, child's entire day? A lot of traditional ABA programs bring therapists into your home who go into another room and they work specifically with the child. I personally don't believe that that's best. I think that the science, the studies are showing that the cases, the kids who have the best outcomes are the ones where the parents are most involved. And we believe that if you're going to teach a child to participate in something using an outside source, meaning a, a, a therapist that is well trained but that is only coming based on a paycheck, and that person comes on their paycheck and they work for three hours and then they leave, what we're basically doing is we're, we're basically handing you a fish so that you can eat every day. And, we're gonna, and you're going to have success and your child's going to make some progress as long as we're there to keep handing that fish. But what happens when you have a good, good therapist who then gets pregnant or who moves or, or has an accident or you have to move or go somewhere else, suddenly you lose access to that and you've got to start all over again and now you've got to try to find someone else who knows what they're doing. And then mom and dad, you've got another problem. The therapist is only there for three, maybe six hours a day. So that's three to six hours a day where I could be interacting with my own child, playing and having fun and learning together, or I'm, I'm, I'm giving that to someone else to do. And then when they leave, I'm still sitting here looking at this child who I don't really know what to do with. Because when we're interacting, he's throwing stuff and knocking down the plants and you know he's speeding in his car and then I have to be back up. So what we really focus on doing is, is we try to teach Mom, dad, aunt, uncle, the neighborhood child, who, or the neighborhood um, student who can come over and work a few hours, the school teachers, the occupational therapist, anybody who's going to be with the child, any adults with the child on a regular basis, we try to teach them the principles of behavior. We develop a program that, that we feel is going to be best for this child, and we teach all of these adults that are already in the child's environment how to work with that child. And what happens is instead of just giving you the fish each day, we're basically teaching you as parents and teachers who are around the child how to fish, how to be able to take care of your own child in a way that is beneficial to their future. That way, no matter what happens, if you know suddenly you know I fall off a cliff and, and I'm no longer here, you still have skills that you can use and you still have the ability to, to work with your child better and better each time. Um, another benefit of it is you don't have to pay large sums of money each and every day to therapists that are coming in. You know, if a, if a low boss style therapist or somebody, I don't want to say low boss because there's all different kinds of people and I'm not talking specifically about um, anyone, but there's all kinds of ABA programs that use their own therapists. Um, and when you're doing that, you may, to some degree, get a therapist that's more experienced, but you may not. And there's no knowing how good that experience is or how good that therapist is. But even if you are assuming that that person is a little bit more talented than you are, bottom line is you may be paying 50, 50 euro an hour, whatever that translates to here, for that person to be there. Um, 50 euro an hour, five hours a day, 40 hours a week, or 20, 30 hours a week, adds up to a pretty big amount of money. And then on top of that, you're paying 100 euro, or 75 euro a day for the consultant to come in and teach that therapist and teach, you know, figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing. Uh, it can be extremely expensive. And when we do a verbal behavior approach the way that we do it, by focusing all of our energies on teaching the parents and not hire bringing in our own therapists, but teaching you to become your own therapist, it keeps the costs much, much lower than they would be. And it also sets you up to be more successful as life. So then I'll, I'll show you a child named Anton. Now this is a video in German, but it's pretty clear what's happening. That you don't need to be, you don't need to speak German to see what a child's misbehaving. Um, just to tell you what happened with this family, this was a child whose mom was a special education teacher. She worked with children with disabilities. Um, was actually considered in her school district to be one of the, the top teachers. And she had a child with autism and she really quickly found that she wasn't able to do much to support her own child um, and realized that she needed help. Uh, when he came into the family and the very first day we were there, the child basically closed his eye. Or, no, first thing he did was he just started screaming and crying the second we walked into the house. And it was like this. Anytime anybody moved into the house, he would scream and yell and cry to get mom to, to not pay attention to them and to, to do his own thing. Then after we showed him, we're not leaving, we're not going anywhere, we're just going to stay here, we have toys. He refused to play with any of our toys, to do anything with us. And actually, whenever we tried to talk to him or do anything with him, he would close his eyes and turn away. That's how he showed us that he just wasn't going to deal with us at all. So we started with the first process of instructional control, which is the idea of just preparing ourselves with reinforcement, showing him that we're this good police officer. We're the police officer who, who, can, who can do all these wonderful things for you. Or better yet to say, we're the teacher who's here to make your life better, to give you more fun. And all we did is we came in and we brought all these toys and started playing. And 
And we realize that as we try to get them to play with them, just the mere pairing together of us with these toys made the toys no longer worthwhile. Things he loved to play with. As soon as we played with them, he said, uh-uh, I don't want to have anything to do with that because you're there. He's had enough experience with people to know that what people are trying to do. They're trying to teach and they're trying to take away his freedom of fun. So what we had to do was basically just play with things without him. Just sit in the room and play with different toys. And we were doing this for a while. And uh, one of our consultants who was in training at the time was playing with this, this spinning, uh, like a, it lit up. It was like a ventilator, a fan. And it had lights on it. It would, you know, light. And he was so interested in it. But every time he would look over it and we'd look at him, he'd go, so eventually, she, so eventually we started sitting down talking with the parents, explaining the concepts, the principles, that sort of thing. And our therapist just sat there on the floor and just played with the ventilator and just swung it around a little bit. Played with and, and we videotaped that. You see him start, he's watching and you see him start to kind of lean in a little bit. And then at one point he reaches his toe out like this and he puts his toe towards the thing and our, and our consultant just kind of goes and puts it there and he, he touches it with his toe and he laughs a little bit. And she doesn't make any moves towards him, she just waits. And before you know it, he's sitting up and he's looking at it, she hands it to him, he's playing with it. And it started the process of showing him that it's okay to be with us. We're not here just to, to force you to do things you don't want to do. We're here to make your life better. And ultimately, he was starting to willing, be willing to let us play. But as soon as we started to say, okay, well now we do want you to do something, just, just sit down on this chair. No, I'm not doing it. Or he wants his dad to, he always wanted his dad to come over to, there was something in the hallway, some toy or something, he wanted his dad to come and show him how it worked or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. But he would tell his dad, come on, come stand up, stand up. And uh, um, at one point in time, he grabbed his dad and tried to get him to get up, right? But he didn't say stand up. He had been saying it all day, but he didn't say it. And we said, okay, let's do it now. So, so my wife says to him, say stand up and we'll get up. And from that moment on, he refused to say stand up. He had been saying it all day, and the second we told him, okay, say stand up and dad will get up, no more, I'm not going to say it anymore. So then he started saying all other kinds of things, like uh, anything but stand up. And he was pulling on dad and hitting dad, and that's what the video we're going to show you. Say aufstehen. Sag aufstehen. Schweißstuhl. Schweißstuhl. Nein, du musst das sagen, aufstehen. Sag aufstehen. Dann stehe ich auf. Schweißstuhl. That's a, that's a threat. That's a threat. Hör auf. Ich mach das nur damit er nicht Aus. Sag aufstehen. Aua! 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 Ultimately, what we, what we started to show him was, you can hit and scream and cry and run around, um, pull on dad, do all these kind of things, um, but you're not going to get the things you want anymore. That, that contract is now no longer written. That's no longer going to lead to reinforcement. But you follow the simplest, easiest instructions. Sit down for a second, or stay quiet for a second, or maybe tap the table just one time for a second, and all of a sudden, you'll start getting all the things that you want. You've got to start turning that around. 